Hey all, my name is Paul Borowski and I am the owner of Quality Business Plan and what I'd like to do today is share with y'all some tips and tricks on how to write a daycare business plan. So without further ado, let me go ahead and share my little PowerPoint presentation with y'all. And first and foremost, let me go ahead and introduce myself again. My name is Paul Borowski. I am the owner of Quality Business Plan. I am a professional writer, specifically a business plan writer. So if you all want to avoid the um, pleasures and excitement of writing your own business plan, uh, please don't hesitate to pick up the phone, give me a call, send me an email. Be delighted to help. If you do want to go ahead and um, go down the path of writing your own business plan, I do offer several guides in the form of books. Um, so if you want to check me out on Amazon.com, just mosey on over to Amazon.com, put my name in there, Paul Borowski, throw an MBA behind it, and voila, you'll have a little bit of um, books coming up um, based on business plan writing and so on and so forth. And finally, the experience is why am I qualified to be able to um, give you all tips and tricks on writing business plans? Well, first and foremost, I am an adjunct um, fi um, finance and business professor. Um, so, and you know, I, I do have experience with that. I'm also a subject matter expert. Um, so if you all do need some help with creating some financial projections or financial models, again, pick up the phone, give me a call, be delighted to help. So enough about me. Let's talk about you. Let's talk about your daycare business plan. All right. So tip number one, when y'all are um, going to do your um, daycare business plan, um, make sure, <clears throat> excuse me. A lot of organ, a lot of daycares are really good at identifying their competitive advantages. Um, they're good at you know being able to describe why their location is good, or they're able to describe why their um, the ages serviced. Um, th that's why their the age ages they're going to service. You know is you know a, is a big demand or a need for the community. Um, but what? Um, what a lot of business owners in the daycare industry can do is they can go a step further. Instead of just hitting the obvious competitive advantages like the location or the ages serviced, you know, go one step further and try to identify, you know, a core competency. You know, what is something that your organization does better than most of the other indus, um, other competitors in your industry? And it could be a, tr a strong training program. You might do an in-depth um, background checks on your employees, you know, whatever that core competency is, make sure to include that in your competitive advantages. Also, what you can do when you talk about your comp competitive advantages is try to think of, think up of something that's called a distinct competence. A distinctive competence, that's something unique that your organization offers, but nobody else offers in your area. You know, for example, you know, a lot of companies or a lot of daycares, what they're doing is they're offering transportation services. Well, how about, you know, something that's a little bit, you know, an additional amenity that parents may be able to buy, um, buy that's not offered by some other um, places, for example, karate. You know, that's something that, you know, you know, teaching, you know, these kids self-defense is, is not a bad idea. And it might be something that you might be able to work out with a karate instructor in the area where they come into your um, location and teach that twice a week and work out some kind of a payment structure. But that's that's a, an amenity or that's a service that other competitors are not going to be able, that are not offering right now. So, you know, it's, it's good to go ahead and offer competitive advantages. It's better if you can identify core competencies and include those. But if you can identify a distinctive competence and include that in your competitive advantage section, you're going to be head and shoulders above your competition. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, tip number two, industry research. A lot of daycare owners, um, from the discussions that I've had, what they like to do is they like to tell me, Paul, Paul, you know, I've done all the research and all these daycares in my area, and I know what their prices are, and I know how many students they have, and I know this, and I know that, and I know something else. And that's well and fine and good um, to do that kind of um, competitor research. However, there is a better strategy that you might be able to employ when doing your industry research. First and foremost, what I do when I do my industry research for daycares, <coughs> excuse me, is I'm going to take a look at the national trends. You know, what are what, what's going on on a national level? You know, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the Child Care Magazine, the IBIS world, and find out what are some services. You know, is there an educational program, you know, that some of the top um, daycares in the country are offering, and they're finding some phenomenal results? Is, some, is there some unique um, complementary um, services that people are offering or the daycares are offering that, you know, parents are really eating up, you know, is, is there a nutritional, 
um, structure that you know be, is being implemented at present. Who knows? Identify what's going on on the national level, and then what you can do is you can take that information you've identified on a national level, and then when you do your competitor research, identify which of those competitors are implementing the national trends in their business. Once you identify those few competitors that are in tune with the national trends, those are going to be the people that you really have to watch out for. Those are going to be your true competitors, and those are the ones that you really want to examine and determine you know, how, how you can best compete against them. All right, tip number three, advertising. And so for um, daycare businesses, from what my experience has been is the daycares to do a really good job with the website and they do a really good job with the social media advertising. However, one thing that kind of lacks when for the daycares is word of mouth and a great way for a daycare business to do um, to get word of mouth um, you know, generated by their, their clients is not only just to offer just phenomenal um, customer service and just you know make sure that the education is there in the daycare and that the you know safety and security are there for the children but also talk to the parents when they come pick them up you know it, how is the child doing is there anything else we can do and also at the end of each conversation you know anybody else that would might need our services you know ask ask for the referrals if you start asking for the referrals, it's going to jog some parents' mind. When they're talking to their friends or family members or coworkers, they're gonna think about your organization because you've brought that up. So make sure to really foster and um, really promote that word of mouth advertising when you're doing it for your daycare and um, business. And next is going to be funding requests. Need a little bit of money. Every business has ever been started that will ever be started. It needs funding. I don't care if you're going to be a tutor and you're just going to have to buy a pencil and paper. You got to buy something. If you're going to do a daycare, it's going to be in your house. Well, guess what? You're going to have to do some kind of safety um, you know, a safety inspection, you're going to have to get some kind of licenses, you're going to have to get some, you know, some inventory for food. So you're going to have to spend money on your daycare business, regardless if it's, uh, you know, $500 to, you know, make your um, house safe and secure, or if it's a million plus dollars, and you're starting a state of the art um, daycare facility, regardless, you're going to need money. When you need money, the way that you should structure, in my most humble of opinions, the way you should st structure your funding request is in the first two sentences, make sure to specifically identify the dollar amount of money that you need in order to start operations and always include working capital, which is just mo extra money that you're going to use for operations until you can start getting the clients in, um, you know, the day to take care of the kids in and the parents, you know, paying what they need to pay. Um, the next section of your funding request should always be a categorized breakdown of how much money you need to start your company. And the categories could include build out for your daycare, it can include inventory for your daycare, it can include advertising costs for your daycare, it can, should also include working capital for your daycare. So make sure you are um, breaking it into the categories. Don't go too, too details you know, and, and start breaking up you know, you know, you know, 0.00 pennies for each grain of rice or anything like that. Use categories where it's specific enough where the reader is going to understand what where the money is going, but not so specific that you're, you know, you're locking yourself into a specific dollar amount for a specific piece of equipment. And then if the cost goes up, then, you know, you're in a little bit of a pickle here. Um, and so and at the end of that section right there, once you do your breakdown for the categories, make sure you sum it up and give a total dollar amount needed to start operations. And that total dollar amount needed for that second section should be identical to the top number that you identified in the first two sentences. And then tip number five, a little bit of money. How much money are we going to make? I'm sure, you know, a lot of people that start daycares, um, because, you know, they love children and, and they want to, you know, go ahead and make sure they've got a you know safe, nurturing environment. But guess what? If you don't make a profit, you're not going to be able to service your customers. If you can't service your customers, you're not going to be in business. If you're not in business, these children are going to have to go somewhere else. And now you can't provide them with a safe and nurturing environment anymore. So profits are important regardless of the drive and the passion for starting the business. So with that said, a great way to structure uh, just a rudimentary breakdown of your daycare revenues. I've got it in three different sections. You've got your revenue sections, you've got your cost sections, and then you've got your profit sections. And the way that I like to um, work this 
just a real basic um, profit and loss statement for daycare is going to be first to identify the age brackets that you're going to be servicing, whether it's infants, one to three year olds, three to five year olds, then align a price to it. You know, for example, infants 120 a week, um, $100 a week for your uh, one to three and ninety dollars for three to five and then identify what the variable costs are you know how, how much you know are you, are you going to be providing formula or are you going to be providing kind of meals or anything like that you know coloring books crayons those are going to be your variable costs so make sure you identify what those are going to be on a weekly basis per child and then what you're going to do is you're going to subtract your variable costs from your your prices which is going to give you your gross profit Next thing you're going to do is you're going to identify what do you think your average is per student or per person per age group. You know, for this example right here, we anticipate four infants. You're going to multiply that by your gross profits, $95. It's going to give you your gross profits for the week of $380. You're going to do that for each one of your age brackets and then total it up right here. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to take your weekly and you're going to kick that out into a monthly revenue um, category. In this example right here, we're going to multiply it by 4.33 because that's the number of weeks in the month. And that's going to give us a growth monthly profit of $24,482. We're then going to take that pretty little number and we're going to plug it in all the way down here. And voila, now we're starting to work on our profits. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to zip on over here to the monthly fixed cost. And on monthly fixed cost, we're going to identify on average what we're going to be paying on a monthly basis, whether it's a loan, inventory, labor, space rental, utilities, marketing, legal, and then always miscellaneous. Once you identify all your fixed costs, sum it up right here. And then once you get that nice little number of 15,300 or whatever your number may be, you're going to zip it on down here to the monthly cost of $15,300. So now you've got your monthly cost tied here. You've got your revenues tied here. You're just going to simply subtract your monthly cost from your monthly profits and it's going to give you net profits. In this example right here, we've got net profits $8,704.82. <clears throat> Not too shabby for a month's worth. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, the beautiful thing of having this little financial model right here is that you can change your monthly cost. You can change the price of um, what you're going to be charging per child. You can change your variable cost. Once you change these and you build this financial little, little you know, simple financial model, your net profits are going to change as well. So now what you're doing here is you're able to identify your specific price points um, within your business that are going to give you the profits that you need to not only be sustainable, but also to grow. All right. So in summary, um, make sure to always follow a proven format. Um, you are starting a daycare business. Um, if you use just a general business plan template you're going to have information in there that's meant for restaurants for men meant for manufacturing that's meant for um goodness knows what um and you're not going to know what information is applicable to daycares and which information is not applicable to daycares so you're going to be spending a lot of time energy and stress trying to determine what information is appropriate for your business um, if you start using a template. So be very careful about using generalized templates. A great place to go to use a specialized template is going to be the SBA website or mosey on over to my website, qualitybusinessplan.com. Send me over an email um, and I do have some templates that I can have modified for your daycare um, that you can use for a relatively a modest price. Next is going to be keep the star of the show is the daycare. Um, so when you start your daycare business, I'm sure you've got 30 years experience or 15 years experience or 10 years experience or whatever experience you have, um, in managing and owning a daycare. And, you know, you've got, you know, qualifi qualifications and educational, um, qualifications. That, that's wonderful and fine and dandy and fantastic. But the business plan is about the business. Make sure the, the star of the show is the business. Talk about the business. Talk about the services. Talk about, you know, talk about, you know, the revenues, the costs, the industry, the amenities. Talk about the business. Make sure that's the star of the show. And finally, if you need some help writing your business plan for your daycare company, uh, don't hesitate to pick up the phone, send me a text, give me a call. Be delighted to help. And, oh, wait now. Hold on a second here. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, so if you all do want... Um, swap this sorry about that so if you all want some more um information on writing your own business plan for a daycare in um daycare company just go over to qualitybusinessplan.com forward slash how to write a daycare business plan <clears throat> excuse me just um go over there 
And what I've got there is I've got some additional information on the different categories within your business plan, whether it be, you know, the executive summary, um, competitive advantages, your financial statements, and so on. So I do give you additional tips and tricks if, if you zip on over to my website. And it's um, the title is uh, How to Write a Daycare Business Plan. If you want even more information on writing a business plan, visit me over at www.amazon.com forward slash author forward slash Paul Broski. Once you get there, I do have a bunch of books um, available for writing business plans. So hopefully this little video was helpful and you all got some nice little tips and tricks for writing your daycare business business plan and maybe some insights and um, have a fantastic day if you like the video give me a thumbs up thank you